Hodgie because the tag is back and nothing makes me happier. <laughs> the, the tag is back. And look, I reckon it's great. Yeah, the, the reason why you do it is because opposition sides have blokes that can turn a game. I just spoke about Butters. And yes, Nash went to him late, but you, you've got blokes who can do this from the first bounce to the last. And you do need taggers. And I'm glad that the taggers are bringing it back. But Kane... But they have to stick to the rules. I know there used to be dodgy oh, taggers. There used to be players. dodgers. Don't there used to be dodgy taggers up. back in the day who oh. used to hold and scrap and they used to wear number Cuddle. 18 for Port Adelaide. <laughs> um, I, I, I actually I raised this last week and it wasn't a tag, it was a defence. It was Williams versus, it was probably two weeks ago, Williams um, versus Elliot for Collingwood. Carlton versus Collingwood Friday night. Elliot was up at a contest and Williams had his back to the stoppage, pushing him away. That is the first cue for an umpire. The, um, the player has to be watching the, the, the contest or the ball. He has his back to the contest, pushing and holding and blocking. That right there, whether you're a defender, and Kane, this is going at my players too, whether you're a defender or a tagger, you have to watch the ball. I agree, you can't uh, I agree, I agree, with, agree with everything you've said so far. Yeah, so that, that there was my first little bit of a peeve last week. But also the thing is that when taggers do hold on to mids, and yes, they do it, and don't get me wrong, the good mids will hold back and try and get themselves in a position. But there is a lot of scrag and a lot of holding. The reason why the umpires brought in the four umpires was to catch any holding, whether it's a defender or a forward, off the ball, or any midfielders that are getting held off the ball. And as much as I love um, Jordan versus Welsh. Uh, Welsh on Friday night, and that turned the game, that was such a good display for him of winning the ball but also shutting Walsh down. But the umpires, if they were fair enough, there's a lot of umpires. So a lot of players would have been called for that back in the day. And I, I heard you this morning, Kane, say – the mids back in back in the day never whinged, never argued. Your best friend, your new best friend, BFF, <laughs> he used to argue to the umpires no, all the time. He did. And I, no, no, and, and what we got told was go to the umpires because the only person you're going to save you is the umpire. If you turn around and whack a tagger, you're going to get suspended. If you let the umpires know, hey, scrag me off the off the ball, guess what? They're going to look for it and they'll find the, the tagger that's scrag and holding. So, Kane, I do agree that the tag is back. I do love it. But the four umpires out there that are watching – and everyone who wants to see our best players go and get a kick, if he's getting held, pay, yeah. pay the whistle. No, blow, I, I, blow the whistle, I didn't, pay the free kick. I didn't say that the old midfielders <laughs> didn't use to whinge. They whinged, but they were just much better at coping with it because they saw it most weeks. The best of them saw it at least every second week where they had someone, whereas today's star midfielder is so unfamiliar with any attention that as soon as they get it, they don't know what to do. That's why it's such a good tactic and it's such a surprise. Yeah. Like Walsh comes back into the side – He's allowed to do whatever he wants, has 35 off a, you know, a serious injury. And the minute he gets someone in his back pocket, he, he really struggles to handle it. Not that he gave yeah. up or anything. I thought, I thought his work rate was excellent. You'd never question that, but he's just not able to have the influence. So that's just my admiration for, you know, Chris Jard and Shane Crawford and Robert Harvey and Nathan Buckley. And I feel, I feel like a, a bit of a dinosaur saying it, but they just copped it every week and they went about it with a minimum of fuss, Simon Black. I think I think you're right because but that back there that's what was expected. If you're going to be a top ten midfielder, you're going to get tagged. You're going to get belted. You're going to get scragged. You're going to have 17, 18 blokes from that opposition trying to belt you, and that's what you put. And then the AFL board in the rules where any scragging, any blocking off the play. So the midfielders of these days, they're not used to it because the AFL made firm rules to make sure players had the freedom to run at the ball without getting tagged and, mm. and scragged and, and held. So I can understand why the players aren't used to it like they used to be. Dogs well, on Thursday night too for the Swans up next down here at Marvel. I wonder yeah. who's next on the James Jordan hit list because there's no shortage Bailey of options. Dale. Yeah, in Bailey that midfield. Dale, look out. You're in for a tough night, I would have thought. That's where I'd be uh, That's where I'd be going. Although you know, Callum Moore did a pretty good job on Marcus Bontempelli but didn't really affect the result. Yep. Ed Richards going well. Ed Richards is going well. Uh, what do you make of the... Sammy Isaac Rankin running too far and the oh, no, fallout from it. It was the right decision, but, but I think the sense of injustice from Adelaide supporters would come from the fact that there was probably another half a dozen of those over the weekend. I reckon Harley Reid did a couple on his own, and we marvelled at that, and that's fine. But we get the lab out and we measure, it and it was twenty-four. Minutes. It didn't to the naked eye. I didn't watch it. You know, you're watching, you think, how far? Oh, yeah, yeah. How far? and usually when you say that, they kick it. There was not a murmur no, of that I in the crowd. I didn't have that. <laughs> that's because he was going that quick. Well, yeah, mate, you think how you... far? Uh, look, I, I felt for the Adelaide supporters because as far as the excitement side of things, you want it to go. Let him go. Let, mm. This is this could have been another close finish or, or a nail bite right on the siren. But if we were that hard on the umpires in the Essendon Crows game for not paying hold on the ball when it was right there and then, then it's the same here. The umpire saw it. He had to call it. Yes, there was a few others around the ground or around other grounds throughout the, yep. throughout the comp this year. But 
It's the same. There was a lot of missed holding the balls in that same game against Essendon and Adelaide. So, look, all you can do to the umpire is call what you see. Don't worry about the theatre of the game. That's not up to them. Their their mindset, their job is to call a free kick when they see it. And, look, yes, he was a bit more courageous. If it had been over in Adelaide, he probably wouldn't have left the ground. But, look, it was it was a decision that I thought, well done. It wasn't the most enjoyable one, but well done. Fallout tsunami-like, as it was always going to be. You knew it was going to be the moment mm. it was going to rage for well, ages. But people just think Adelaide were going to kick a goal, No, they? well, there's no oh, given, there's 15 is seconds left. Adelaide are just going to pluck a goal out of their backside. With it. Like, like, people just lose their mind over stuff like that. An eventful few seconds, because he obviously rips the hammy in the same play as well. Yeah, and, what's the and, update there? Uh, it's a three-weeker. They, they're confident it's a standard hamstring, but obviously these can, things, as they manifest themselves, can worsen. But at the moment, every confidence, it's a three-weeker. Weaker. But Josh Marnie, who played some of his audio earlier, he was on the bench for that game, and he admitted as well in an interview with the AFL website that he got caught up in the emotion of it too and didn't think he'd run too far until the whistle had gone. So it actually wasn't close. Like he said, it was close to the naked eye. I mean, if we trust the Fox footy lab, it had it at 24-odd metres. So it's about 10 metres longer should than we it should. Extend if, that? If, should we extend it from 20? Like One of the great things that I'm witnessing right now and the thing I'm loving about football currently is speed kills. Mm. We, we have some players with genuine wheels and – I can't remember a time where we've got as many, like what Rankin did, what Blakey is doing, what Warner is doing, what Butters is doing. Those that can read, can tuck it under the arm and go, like that's why Juddy blew us away. When he sort of, didn't he, Hodgie? I mean, it is your year. When he burst onto the scene, he was doing that. I don't know. Maybe we extend it a little bit and give the players a bit more grace. I agree. I don't see, it's not going to change the game. Changing it from 15 metres to 25 metres, what what annoys me is when people get the ball and bounce it in their first four steps when there's just pointless you don't need That's to. That's an Adam Sard specialty. <laughs> but as soon as – if you watch the actual the tape, he runs through two cuts of grass. Each cut of grass, the MCG, is 10 metres. Yeah. So if you go back and look at it, it had to be mid-20s at least from, from where he – because he, he got the first bounce and got it back. And because it happened so fast, you think, oh, he couldn't have ran it – couldn't have went over 20, but it was clearly mid-20, 24, 25 metres. Yeah, mm. I think you're right. The speed that he covered the ground – Probably did well, the, the, the one in the first quarter where mm. he just split about three of them. Five uh, of them chasing he, up. He mucked the handball up to Dawson. They turned can, it over. But can yeah. we go back to the the injury? How disappointing that is. The fact that he was actually starting to have a bit of a was it in the off season or earlier this year where he said that he he wants to fill his his potential and he could be the best in the AFL. And I'm sitting there going, turn it up, son. But then you sort of look at what he's been able to do and go. Geez, he actually has the potential. His speed, his smarts, his aggression. I love his aggression, um, but it, how he's willing to take the game on. You sit back and go, how flat is that for Adelaide? They just get back onto onto the right part of the, the, the form that they were playing and, the, and their best player is gone. Um, last week, you were reasonably defensive as much as you could have been over Richmond and you went about defending them by bringing out some stats of mine, which I'm still trying to work out how I played into <laughs> Richmond getting smashed, but... Um, no, can do you understand the feedback that I get whenever I hang shit on you? <laughs> they love it. Mate, I, okay. I've, I've, I've had about ten messages today. Just remind remind Kane that <laughs> um, that Harley Reid didn't cramp in the fourth yeah, quarter yeah, as well, he won the game for you. Well, he so. only had two touches in the last quarter. So anyway, <laughs> I, I, hey, my reply back was he'll come back with he only had two touches. <laughs> <laughs> um, Richmond, do your best to try and defend that performance. Can you? Uh, look, I wasn't defending their performance. What I was saying is the game isn't as easy as what we're making out to be. Yes, you go up there and they've got a lot of injuries. If Ooze had his time again in his press conference last week, would he have changed what he said? Yes, he would have. And you could t- you could tell this week would, he'd thought a lot more about his press conference and he came out a bit a bit firmer. But you, you go through, if you look through a game of, a game of football and there's 152 to 57 uncontested marks, the easiest thing you can do in football is man up. Mm. That that is one thing that it strikes me. Yes, people are trying to do zones and like, but once their team, so Brisbane came out and clearly showed that they wanted to control the game with kick mark style of football. After a quarter, after two quarters, the the, the flick, the decision should have been made to let's just go and man them up. If they're going to beat us, beat us through a contest. Uh, and as you said, there, there was no there was no argument uh, for the way that Richmond played on the weekend. They got beaten by a team who's hungry, who's trying to get back into the the right side of the win loss ledger. But they also had a lot of young kids as well. Mm, all right. Um, reaction here off the temper text in terms of rank and running too far and should we extend it? It's not bloody rugby. Says, <laughs> says, well, I'm not saying it is, but I don't think we should punish players. But, for mate, it, there's a new newspaper a column difference? coming here, isn't there? I mean, you've had to go at the six. That maybe no bounces should come in. No bounces. Next newspaper but does it column. make a difference? Can, can I ask? That's a genuine. I, I, I can understand. The 666 was put in because the, the, the mindset is if there's more space from a centre bounce, you'll be well, able to Bouncing's a skill, isn't it, Oji? It, it is a skill, but is it going to make that much difference whether you bounce it at 15 or bounce it at 20? Because mm. all it is yeah. is what we want to see. Because we're so boring in today's game, we're so defensive, what we do see is – 
when you get a bit of flair and you get punished for being flair, being exciting and trying to bring a bit, a bit of entertainment to the game. All right. A few people are having a crack at me about the 119 point margin. Somehow I got dragged into that as well because that's where we lost the, the 2007 grand. You should see some of the idiots How's on that social relevant media. Here? I got no idea. Yeah. Uh, so I've, uh, I've got about eight different accounts, Kane, and I'm coming at you from all of them. <laughs> that makes sense. That makes sense. I mean, if we can find a way to make it relevant, let yeah. us know off the temper yeah. text. All right. Um, what were your thoughts when you saw what Harley Reid was doing yesterday prior to the last quarter? <laughs> um, I, th- I think it's a potential that we've, we've seen. I, I know last week you, you said about, or two weeks ago, apologies, you said about he needs to focus on how Nick Dacos trains and the running and the back. He'll never be able to do that. He, he'll never. It's, I, I know if you look back at the bigger, and yes, he needs to improve his tank and that, but he's never going to be an athlete to be able to go and run break lines and be able to do repeat efforts like Nick Dacos. It's like, I'll use you, Kane. It's like you coming in and mm. saying, I'm going to play like Dusty. Mm. I can't break tackles like Dusty. I'm not as strong. You could spend every day and look at your rig. You've spent a lot of time in the gym at the moment, but you'll never be able to break. <laughs> Sorry, another guy. <laughs> uh, no, that, was able... that was a pump up. That was a pump up. I'll take that. Hand, a backhand yeah. one. But you'll, never, but you'll never be able to play like Dusty. It's the same as that. Yeah. So Harley's got so many strengths. Is he going to be able to do like Nick can? He doesn't have that ability to do it. But what, what he, yes, he, from what you're saying, he does need to work on his uh, aerobic capacity. But what we saw was a bloke who is in charge of that midfield. Yo had been out. He'd been starring in there as well prior. But this is a contested style of game where he just took control for three quarters, as you said. The, the goal out of the centre, where you, you mm. knew he was going to kick it. You're watching that number nine just burn through. Yeah, that was... Just take a game and control. And, and you sort of look at West Coast, that how have they played? They, they're still, they still need... a a lot of work on their defensive areas. I think they're number 17. Once the ball goes inside their, four, their defensive 50, they're still the 17th easiest team to, to score against. Um, when they've got the ball in hand, they're still 16th rated for score. So they, they've still got so much work to do. But where the, when they have won games, it's been their contested footy. They're plus, on average, plus 21 in contested footage, which shows that it's the the Cali, the Harley Reid, the Elliot Yo. Those blokes are the ones who are standing up when they need to, and they're the ones who had a really mm. big impact when they've had wins. All you need to do from that young side now is learn how to limit the bad days from the good days and just make it more consistent because what we saw from that side against the – I had Melbourne as a top four team. What we saw from them on Sunday was a team that I want to go and watch. Mm, it's I, a team that you've you got Waterman up forward. Like, oh, there's, there's players up there that is, I actually look at them and go, I actually want to go and watch West Coast I play. Well, I, I, I wouldn't have watched one of their games for the last I two know. years, but I'm starting to flick it across is that, now. Is that the story? It's just it's about the story there. of the year. They might be fighting out the two of them, Harley Reid and Jake. Well, I can't believe it. to be 29 majors, he's played a game less than yeah. the others to, to have an equal lead of the, the Coleman. I, his hands are just... And he's doing. He's an absolute animal one on one. He's doing animal. it every week. That's the word. He's an animal. Look at his facial expression when he goes for a lead. He wants that ball. He's he's squeezing gonna, the live out. He of is going to eat you to get that ball. Like there's a d- genuine determination Where is that on come- his face. <laughs> I, I don't know. Like it's just it's a it's a great. Honestly, it is because he he thought his career was nearly done. Didn't it's he? A, it's out of, out just totally out of the box. We farewell the volcano. Uh, he was uh, holding him off from all angles. From Hodgie, uh, who stays with us, of course, the Hawthorne uh, icon. In fact, this text is. Dropped Hodgie. How long would a Kane Corns Luke Hodge boxing match go for? One point one nine seconds, says this texter. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm a lover, not a fighter. No, you are indeed. No, I don't think I'd, I don't think I'd be able to drop to his weight division. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> He's discipline. I can tell you that much. <laughs> hey, yeah, uh, the free mental dockers you've got on your your agenda here. Now they kicked nine eighteen, which uh, didn't matter in the end because um, St Kilda just can't find uh, the sticks themselves at the moment. And their offensive. Uh, transitional play and everything associated with moving the ball at the moment is a glaring issue. But Sean Darcy didn't play at the weekend. Luke Jackson did. What does this mean for this ever-intriguing partnership that Fremantle have got going forward? You've got some numbers to back up your thoughts. Yeah, no, it was just more the fact that clearly both are quality ruckmen, um, quality players. But when you've got two blokes that are really good in one one position, it uh, it sort of nullifies. And if you look at, you look at um, Jackson on the weekend... What he had, he had 25 touches, 10 clearances, mm. um, 15 ground ball gets, six tackles. Like that's that's a quality game for any midfield, let alone let alone a ruckman. Uh, but then if you look at the numbers when he plays compared to when Darcy doesn't, when he's without Darcy, he averages 20 almost 22 touches. He has 12 contested possessions. He hits the 20 poso- uh, possession mark. Six. He's had, he's done it six of the seven games that he's played without Darcy this year. And then if you look at the ones, sorry, uh, if you look at the ones with Darcy, he averages 14 touches, he halves his contested possession, goes to six, and then he's never reached 15 disposals once in those games. So you look back and go, well, 
Fair enough. Maybe if he's playing forward. So he's impacted the scoreboard more, Jackson, when Darcy's playing. When Darcy's playing, he's kicked four goals and he's had five score assists. That's what he averaged. Uh, without uh, with, without Darcy, he's done the same. He's kicked four goals and had five. So effectively, what you're doing, you're paying a million bucks for a player to rest him forward and have half half the impact mm. when Darcy's playing. Then if, if he, whenever Darcy doesn't play, he goes into the middle. He stars, has 22 touches, has clearances, has contested possessions, tackles. His follow up good is his follow up game is as good as any ruckman out there. So you should sort of sit back. And I know they've got a big decision to make because Jackson has got a long term contract. Darcy's got a long term contract, but you're limiting. One of your strengths and playing him half half the game out of his out of his own proper position. They're wedded to it. They're wedded to it though, aren't they? Like we've spoken about this that many times. Like Luke Jackson joined on a seven year contract. Sean Darcy six months ago, basically five minutes ago, signed on for six. But that's what I mean. It, we don't, we'll know, we know these days that contracts don't meet as much mm. as what they used to. And if Darcy, but that's the thing is Darcy's coming back in and he's playing the number one ruck role, so he's not going to go any, go anywhere as long as he's starting to do that. But if I was Luke Jackson, I'd be sitting here going, understand it is a team game and, and I've got to earn my, my respect to get into that number one ruck role. But he's proven that he's a quality ruckman and he has more of an impact with the team when he's yep. solely the ruckman and has a, a bit of a pinch hit forward. That's proven, isn't it? Over time, he's always played his best stuff when the other ruckman hasn't been. That was the same at Melbourne too. Had some great games on the rare occasions that Max Gorn missed. Um, he likes being the big man on campus. Well. Are they, will they make? Is there any, been any talk around there about Jackson, or is anyone chasing him? Because well, Jackson's still nah, a look, quality player. I think Luke Jackson's. I mean, he signed a seven-year deal to come back to Western Australia. I think if anyone's going to move, it's not going to be him. Oh it's no, gonna, sorry, Darcy. I mean, it's going to be Darcy. He's yeah. not going anywhere. Probably. No, it's going to be Darcy. I mean, he would have widespread interest, of course. But again, um, re-signed on a on a six-year deal at, at the end of last year. So that's something that. Uh, the ball resides in Fremantle's court. That's their list management decision to make. And at the moment, um, publicly, certainly, they, they showed no signs of deviating away from that. And Sean's got his injury issues at the moment, of course. Uh, North Melbourne and Essendon, they were pretty good for a half, weren't they, the Kangaroos? And on a weekend of upsets, you thought maybe just for a fleeting moment there, they might have asked some serious questions of Essendon as the, as the game unfolded. It wasn't to be. But something caught your eye between a, a couple of North Melbourne players, one of them the defender, Aidan Corr, and, a, and another teammate. Yeah, well, I understand when you're in defence, it's it's an intense time, and I know that I've given a teammate the odd the odd spray occasion when you when you felt it to deserved it. But uh, core, I know there was there was this was Langford's last goal, uh, so I was late in the in the fourth quarter. They'd lost the game. A ball was kicked to Scott. He's gone up with one arm. The ball it was, wasn't a great kick. It's gone over his head. Didn't probably go back as hard as what he could have. Uh, and then an Essendon player's kicked it off the ground and it's landed right on Langford's chest, right in front of Core, who was manning him at the time. And I've never seen a dirtier look. He's pointed straight at him. He pointed never him out. A, yeah. Pointed him out, looked at him, eyeballed him as if you need to be better than that. I'm sitting there going, is that what a young kid's... And he, Scott had a ripping game. He had 26, 27 touches. Is that what you really want from a, a senior defender to eyeball a younger kid who's if anyone, he's one who's trying more than anyone out, out, in, out in the field. Well, Core had a good game too, to his credit, for him. He hasn't had many of those at North Melbourne, I think, with, without um, without being unnecessarily mean. Well, I mean, they are the facts. But he, he, he has on, kept. Hang on. He, had a, he had a good game. Well, he kept Langford to one goal. He did. But if you look out of the whole season, he's furious, and that was that one goal. But. He's given up 31 goals in 10 games. Yeah, I know, I know. That's, the most, that's the most in the AFL. Yes, yeah, so so I know that. No, I'm just talking before, about the weekend. But yeah, the, before, the body before language. Before spraying a young kid. Yeah. I'd be so worried the, about my own backyard. So there's maintaining high standards and there's being unnecessarily demonstrative. Yeah, you think if, if there's a person, who, it's a repeat offence of doing something, yes, you'll have a word to him and point it out then and there. But if it was a, a sole incident, and what I've seen of, of Scott, that he puts his body on the line more often than not. I just thought it was a little bit for a team that's really trying yeah. to build culture, build character, and yes, you're trying to build standards. But pointing out at what, what's Scott, 23, mm. 24, still mm. learning the game, he's, he's finally in there getting a bit of consistency. Uh, I just thought, I don't know, I thought it was a bit weird from a from a fullback who had plenty of goals kicked on him himself this year. So do you, do you take yourself back to when you were Bailey Scott's age, running around, and and how you were, I guess, brought along by your senior teammates? Uh, oh, I guess back then, feedback was a lot more honest than what it is <laughs> in today's game. So um, even if you're talking nice to someone, you'd probably spray them worse than, than what you did in today. But but that was that was accepted back then. You'd make sure you you didn't speak until you were spoken to. You had to earn the respect of everyone. It's changed these days. You need to build up the young guys, make, make sure they feel comfortable in their, in their surroundings. That's how you get the best football out of them. And I just thought it was a bit weird that late in the game, the game's, the game's over, and you're eyeballing a, a young fellow who's had a ripping game himself. Yep. Hey, the tide's out on the 
orange tsunami. I'm not sure what's happened to the Giants, but they've got plenty of work to do. They've lost three on the bounce. They've got to go down to Geelong this weekend. Hodgie, incidentally, is staring down the barrel of a fourth consecutive loss themselves. So it's it's been that sort of a season. But uh, look, a month ago, um, Adam Kingsley's men were amongst the, the chief flag fancies, according to most people you'd speak to. And what's happened up there? Yeah, you sort of look at it. And I, I was there live on Anzac Day to, to watch them play against the Brisbane Lions, and they made them look silly. They made the Lions look like witches' hats. They won the contested ball. They ran hard off half back. Um, Callahan took the game on. Their forwards were lively. Uh, but in the last month, one thing I've noticed is drop off is the contested possession, actually winning that in and under ball. Um, I think in the first, from opening round to about round five or six, they were rated number one in contested possession wins. They've dropped to 14 over the last three to four weeks. So that's a big one. That sort of flows into getting the ball inside forward 50. In the first five weeks, they were rated number three in the AFL. So they were giving their forwards a massive opportunity to kick a big score. They've dropped to 16 since round six. So you, you sort of start to put it together that the mids aren't getting their hand on the ball as much. Uh, they're not giving their forwards as much of an opportunity, but it's also um, what they were really good at was scores from clearances. So they, were, they, didn't, they didn't win a lot of clearances compared to their opposition, but what they were able to do is when they won it, they were able to score really, really effectively. And they were, they were rated third, I think, for, for scores from clearance. They've dropped that down to 13th. So you sort of look at a few things that need to drop off and the, and the AFL system or the AFL season is so so even this year, it's so consistent um, that if you drop off that little bit, teams will find a little mm. flaw in your in your chink and, and then they'll, they'll try and exploit it. And that's what they've been able to do to GWS because the last, what have they lost? Three of the last four games or four of the last five games, which is, which is surprising from what we saw in the first five games. No, their last win was back in round seven. It was the one that caught all of our attention. It was the one in Canberra against um, yep. your old mob, the, the Brisbane Lions. Since they haven't won, they've lost to Sydney. They've lost to Weston. Uh, they bad loss to the Dogs and they've got the Cats this weekend. I think, I just watched them now and the, the dares seems to have gone. Like the corridor play, um, going back through the corridor just rarely happened. I know conditions played into that bit and it was a shocking day. I mean, Cal Ward in game 301 kicks the wrong way, for heaven's sake, Hodgie. So they were just <laughs> off all the way through, but it's like the hermit crab. They've gone back into the shell from nowhere. But, but the, I think that's what happens. Is, and this is what Sydney are going to start to find, that if you're sitting on top of the ladder and everyone's worried about how strong you are and you're the team to beat at the time, teams will start to scout. Teams will start to try things about you. So no doubt they would have looked at GWS and they're aggressive. They wanted to go through the corridor. They would have shut that down, and they would have tried to block anything where they were taking advantage over their their teammates, uh, and that's yeah. oh, sorry over their opposition, and, and that's what teams are really good at these days. They get op- opposition analysts who go through and pick the team apart on why they're playing such good footy, and if you, your game isn't solid, they can they can tear you apart like that. And that, I think that's what Sydney are going to be going through as well. Sydney are hands down at the moment the number one team. They're sitting two games clear on top. Um, teams are going to start to pick through. How do we beat Sydney? Yes, we're going tag. Heaney or is it a Warner? They're going to try and do things because they know that just face on face value, they're probably not going to beat them on a on a, on a day-to-day basis. Now, this is not a question to you. It's more of an observation that I made, but that game drew only 7,740. I thought that was alarming. Again, conditions were an issue, but there's no rugby league up there last weekend. They had uh, um, Magic Round up in your part of the world. That was their first game back at NG Stadium. Maybe that was the problem. First game back on that deck since round Two, but even by Western Sydney standards, it was a low, low crowd, OG. And this, I think, points to the ongoing fight, and the fight is real. We're in the trenches here with with getting eyeballs on the game in the stands in that part of Australia. Yeah, we are. But I, I think what you also have to look at is is who who are they playing? The travel. So if you play, and we find that up in Brisbane yeah. as well. If you're playing a Brisbane or sorry, if you're playing a Carlton or a Collingwood or or a Geelong or a big team who passionate supporters that will travel. Those crowds normally will bump up, and you might get, especially to a, a, a Giants game, you might double the size because of the the, the travellers, the, the supporters of the travelling team. Bulldogs tend to don't have a, a history of their supporters travelling. I know they went up there for the final up there a few years ago, and it was an unbelievable sight. And the, the crowd atmosphere was amazing, but history shows that Western Bulldog supporters haven't travelled as much as as the other other teams, and I think that's what has affected the, the crowd rating there. Yeah, well, I mean, the Swans, they're flying. Equal third biggest home and away crowd ever at the SCG uh, for that big win over over the Blues. So their crowds this year, 44,000, 40, 35, 34, and, the, and, and 40, and there was even a lockout for a period of time uh, back on uh, Friday. Night. Even Alex Volkanovsky was in the team song, for, for goodness sake, Hodgie, the Volk. Um, just with, with Chad Warner, I, it almost looks like he's... I'm not sure he's taken the P1 double five, but he's almost, he's toying with them at times, isn't he? His sidestep is that good at the moment. He's seeing it. If he was a batsman, he'd be seeing a lot of watermelons. He's seeing it from all angles. 
He's almost embracing the pressure, stepping out of it. He's got an amazing confidence in congestion at the moment. Yeah, I think that comes down to the the players he's got around him as well. He's he's got the he's got the belief, and I reckon the coaches say, "Look, you go and play your your style of football." Because you're right, when he picks a ball up, he looks at the person, and thinks, "Well, you're going to have to tackle me because I'm going to take you on. I'm going to fend you off. I'm going to break your tackle." And he's I think he's number two in the league with fend off tackles behind that man we're talking about before, Harley Reid. Um, but if if I was playing against Sydney, who do you tag? Well, Heaney's been mm. he's number one in the coaches' vote, so clearly he's having a good year. Gordon, he just signed a however many year contract. He's been elite for the last few years as that winger, but he even went inside. He can play inside, he can play outside. You got Warner there as well, Adams. And then if you look at other blokes at well, Parker, who hasn't even back isn't even back in the side yet. So Blakey. you sit back and go, mm. Blakey off the half back line. Sydney are, I would love to be playing in that midfield because you know that one of the four are gonna get tagged, but the other three are gonna are gonna get off the leash, as we saw on the weekend. If you look at their on Friday night, their top three possession getters was Warner had twenty eight, Gordon had twenty eight, Heaney had twenty four, and both Warner and Heaney both kicked three goals each. So yeah. they're they're fine on the ball, but they're also pushing forward and, and hitting the scoreboard as well.